the demand of new families moving in. It's a barometer of confidence in the future of my town. A confidence that comes from knowing its many advantages. The excellent schools, for example, that serve their children. And the playgrounds available for recreation. Not unique, of course, in the pattern of American communities, but comforting to the happy fathers and mothers who live here and call it home. For my town is home in the pleasantest sense of the word. From the early call of the milkman, through a day of normal activities, one gets the feeling that this is a community of good neighbors. The kind of a place you'd like to live in. Perhaps grow old in. Home service. These days, homes have telephones wherever it's convenient. And that's as it should be. They want their extension and they'll be of most value. It could be indoors, say the bedroom, or outdoors on a terrace. And we installers can be of help. For instance, you'll find that you have lots of chances to... Well, as the telephone company's long and continuing association with the communities of America. The My Towns Everywhere, who gave it the opportunity to be of service. They have grown together, these cities and villages of America, and... We have come to take for granted an abundance of water. ahead depends the pattern of life for a nation. The stakes are high for all of us, but the job is being charted with vision. That's what Winston Churchill was saying as the post-war era opened. But to most Americans, it didn't seem that things had changed very much. This was the atomic age we were living in now, and the papers were telling us that life would never be quite the same again. But Hiroshima seemed a long way off from Main Street. And a thousand hometowns from Batavia, New York to Amity, Oregon would look pretty much as the lucky ones got back home. Peace. It was wonderful. The future looked good, and a Washington official made it sound even better. Family at the same time. Old Siwash was never like this. But for millions of former fighting men, the future looked inviting. As for the past, well, it was fading and dimming, but nobody would ever forget it. The wild blue yonder. So we took on the Marshall Plan and went right on hanging out the family wash. While the world hung in the balance, Americans everywhere were showing a wholesome ability to adjust to new ideas and meet new challenges wherever they cropped up. Democracy was working. All One sixth of all retail business firms are connected with the automobile. Yes, even including little Jimmy's first business venture, the motor car makes business for America. And one out of every five retail sales dollars in America changes hands because the motor car made it possible. Yes, the motor car has been a key factor in all the ways we do business in America. But it has had even greater effect on the way we live and the pleasure we get out of living. Being able to drive out into the country has made many of us want to live in the country. And the motor car has made it possible for millions. Today, suburban construction is more than three times the construction in the city. And just as the motor car is a tool for working, with more than half of us using it to go to and from our daily work, so it is a tool for enjoyment. It puts America at our doorstep for business or pleasure. 
Whether you're traveling on business or pleasure, the chances are even that you'll travel by motor car. More than half of us take yearly vacations, and most of us take them on the highway. As a result... Anything. 38 miles southwest of Pastor Burke's church is the suburb of Park Forest, part of the city too. Its people come from all over the world. They are young people with families. Most of the men are junior executives working for large corporations. They may be here for one year or for five, but basically they are in transit. The women are mostly college graduates whose minds are occupied these days with affairs of children, school, and sometimes church. It's a great place for the children. Fresh air and green grass, no smoke to dim the sun, and lots of other youngsters to play with. I talked with Dr. Gerson Engelman and other pastors. The families in Park Forest will come and go, but in all the essential ways of living, in their sharing of the same problems and dreams, the newcomers will be like those who went before them. Here is another kind of So far, Grandad and Jimmy have been devoting their attention to the activities for boys. But the community chest also provides a wholesome educational and recreational program for girls. In fact, Jimmy's sister Janie is rapidly gaining the title of family artist. At present, she has been doing landscapes. But it won't be too long before she will graduate to portrait work. She gained this skill at the YWCA painting class. Home care and, if possible, adoption. A treasured toy and an old tattered shopping bag are all the worldly possessions of a small boy ready for placement in a new home. What he lacks in material goods is easily outweighed by the love and affection he will receive from his new parents. Foster home placement and adoption are just two of the many concerns of the Quincy Catholic Charities. And others not so good. Oh no! Discouraged? Disgruntled? Heck no. They're glad to be here. Remember? they join the stream of family life in the suburbs, soon to become part of its familiar sights, soon to absorb its familiar sounds. Anybody home?
These are what Red Book means by its young adults. People in a certain living situation with particular interests and particular goals. On their own for the first time, and determined not to miss a single new homemaking idea. They're busy just making choices and welcome solid information in concise form. It takes a while for a young couple to realize all they're in for when they buy a house or when they have a baby. And when they buy a house and have a baby, So hardly realizing it, they come into their purchasing stage and are off on a wild non-stop ride. It's a happy-go-spending world reflected in the windows of the suburban shopping centers where they go to buy. Red Book has been studying shopping centers because the people who created the suburbs are young adults. And the shopping centers are built in their image. Selling to young adults demands a new kind of marketing. For these young adults, the shopping centers have built fountains, commissioned statues, put in restaurants and freestanding stairways. They've included banks, loan offices, rental plans, plant nurseries, and places to buy building materials. The shopping centers see these young adults as people whose homes are always in need of expansion. People who buy in large quantities and truck it away in their cars. It's a big market. To help people find their cars, the centers have enlisted the children. They've put in shopmobiles to help them cover the ground. They've added banks of storage lockers, miles of checkout counters, and endless rows of carts. Carts rolling down the malls at Southdale, at Northland, at Gulfgate, Sunrise, and East Point, at Hillsdale in California. These young adults, shopping with the same determination that led them to the suburbs in the first place, are the goingest part of a nation on wheels. Living by the automobile, the first young adults in the age of the push button. Like the rest of life in suburbia, shopping has a family flavor. Do you remember what size she was? Five. Then we bought a tree to go with. Yes, yeah, sir. That looks pretty nice. I don't know. Shall I take it? These busy families make the shopping centers look young and colorful. They have a let's go see quality that brings crowds to community events and promotions. For the children, whom the young adults have always at hand, there's plenty to do and see. While his family shops, a 
A boy can catch a fish, ride the rides, go to the circus, visit the center zoo, and have his hair cut. And if that doesn't tire him out, his mother can put him in the center's nursery school, where he can get paint on his shirt, see his friends, and wear himself out on the bars. Since these young adults seem to be able to outlast their children, they stash them away at a neighbor's house and go back to the center for more. All who cooperate in the building of America and its grandeur are united in a heroic tribute to the millions of engineers who have conceived and designed Mr. Robin didn't know what people were saying. He just looked about over the yards and the houses and sidewalks he knew so well. Several days later, the grass was greener and tiny leaves were opening on twigs. Mr. Robin was no longer alone, for Mrs. Robin had come to be with him. Mrs. Robin... And these same rules help us come to school safely on a city bus or streetcar. Riding to school in a car is something like riding in a school bus. Do you know how to be a safe rider? Keep your hands out of the way when you close the car door. Watch out for other people's hands, too. When you're riding, keep your hands and head inside the car. And remember not to disturb the driver by jumping around or shouting. Let's drop in on the Jones family on a typical morning. Here's Jack, 
Same old Jack I went to college with, still hard to wake up. And Wendy, aged nine, quite the young lady. Pat, age six. Never get to school on time that way, mister. Roddy, age three. A chip off the old block. Helen, who has to get up to get breakfast. And Linda, nine months old, the family alarm clock. Helen does a very good job of looking after her family. But her way isn't the only good one. There are a hundred proper ways of looking after children. No two mothers do it quite the same, and yet most of them do it very well. The baby may be fed before or after the rest of the family. They may have cereal or bacon and eggs or both. And they may eat breakfast in the kitchen for convenience, or they may eat it in the dining room. Those are just details. But Helen knows that her children's health depends on the kind of care that she gives them, and she tries to apply a few basic rules. First of all, there must be the right kind of food. At every age, children need vitamins, proteins, minerals, and carbohydrates. Helen is careful to prepare a balanced diet, but she doesn't insist that they eat it. She realizes that a little thing like tension over exams at school could spoil Wendy's appetite for a short time. And because she doesn't get emotional over eating as an end in itself, the Jones children usually eat heartily before going off to school. Looking after one child is a job for any mother, but looking after four is a job for the whole family. Wendy, would you cut up Lottie's toast for him, please? And of course, good manners don't come naturally. Hey, son, that's not the way to eat eggs. That's right, Jack. Bad habits are hard to break, so good habits should be formed early. How about trying it with a fork, eh? Pat's breach of etiquette is only an attempt to get attention. Jack tries to give him the attention he needs, but pleasantly, instead of snapping at him. He knows that happy children usually eat well. Even in summer, the children take cod liver oil for extra vitamin D to build strong bones. Almost as important as food is outdoor play, because sunlight helps the body produce vitamin D. Linda doesn't get around much, but she is gradually getting control of her muscles, encouraged, of course, by her big brother. And Helen helps her by providing the right equipment to stimulate new activities. Exercise is one thing that Roddy gets plenty of. There's so much crawling to be done. And so many things to climb over. There are so many miles to ride that the days are hardly long enough. And this is exercise, too. Practice in muscular coordination. The beauty of it all is that Roddy isn't continually told that it is good for him. As children grow, they need to use all their muscles. There are interesting ways of using small muscles. And there are games for big muscles, too. Some simple homemade equipment helps children to develop. And space is essential. The Jones children are lucky because they have a lawn and parents who understand that exercise is more important than grass. All the neighborhood small fry play there. Of course, kids will always get some exercise. You couldn't stop them if you wanted to. But without space and equipment, there's not much to encourage full development of muscles and lungs and circulation.
There's a park near the Jones place, and Pat is beginning to go there quite a bit to play with the older boys. All the Jones get lots of fresh air. Linda sits out in her carriage nearly all day. Here, Linda. Mommy said I could give Linda a piece of an apple. Lucky Linda. You know where Pat is off to? He's out the... At the crossroads of the nation in southeast Iowa lies the city of Ottumwa. It might be your town, or any town, USA. For here in this typical hometown, just being itself, can be found that intangible substance which we call our American way of life. It is a substance which lives in the people themselves, each of whom in his own way contributes to its growth. All the people of all walks. Among them, making his own special contribution, is Sergeant Wallace Bacon. Just as he has done for several years now, Sergeant Bacon, the Army recruiter for Ottumwa and surrounding districts, leaves his office in the federal building for an appointment with a boy and a problem. To the people of Ottumwa, Sergeant Bacon's car is a familiar sight as it travels the streets and country lanes on its military mission finest modern tools that till the land. Our city is something to be proud of, and so is the life we have here. The things that make up this life have not come as a gift. They've been hard won over the years. We draw strength and pleasure from the life we have. We benefit from it in direct proportion to our appreciation of it and our determination to preserve it. This is true for all of us. It is true of the old. It is true for the young. It is true for the housewife, no less than for the husband. We live together, work together, make our common cause together, and each of us is called upon to sacrifice something for the many freedoms we enjoy. It has been that way ever since our forefathers first came to this bend in the river 110 years ago. The Indians called this place Atumwanak place of swift waters, and it went up out of the efforts of our people. We have worked hard, and the rewards have been a way of life and a standard of living second to none anywhere in the world. From our community, we have sent our state its governor, Governor Herschel Loveless, an Ottumwa man born and raised. And from this house on Davis Street, we sent the world one of its most beautiful women to the Miss Universe contest. <laughs> Swimming coach. The people here have come to accept the Army as part of their way of life. Even more gratifying to me is that they now seek me out as a friend. They know I can help their sons over the most difficult years of decision in their lives. Young men like these stand poised to take the step from adolescence to maturity. Part of the lure of the suburb is in the greater elbow room it offers. Part of it is due to that relative newcomer to our economy, the budget-priced home. This symbol of modern American living has brought with it more than a changing landscape it has changed a great industry. Keen competition in the booming home construction industry has forced re-examination of almost every time-honored method with a view to improving quality and at the same time reducing costs. Consider Levittown, Delaware Valley, USA, one of the world's largest single-unit housing developments located in the fast-growing industrial area between Philadelphia and New York City. 
Here, 16,000 low-cost homes are being constructed on spacious landscape lots, bordering gently sloped, winding streets. This is no mere collection of homes, but a carefully planned community, complete with modern schools, churches chosen by the residents, but conforming architecturally with other Levittown buildings, playgrounds that leave nothing to be desired, and modern shopping centers that offer easy access without through traffic. Here, nearly 5,000 new homes per year rise out of an area that was only yesterday swamp and meadow and brush. The speed and precision teamwork that makes possible this mass production of low-cost homes on a profit-producing basis is a tribute to the enterprise of the American construction industry. It calls for big men like Ed Ludlow, the general superintendent, and Tini Marone, the masonry contractor, who think big and plan carefully, skilled in their fields to operate on a big scale and a small margin. Big machines designed for a single job, moving huge chunks of earth or carrying huge quantities of material. Skilled craftsmen whose sure hands allow no waste, no costly errors. But more than this, it calls for extreme care in selecting the work tools, the everyday time-saving equipment of the construction industry. Here at Levittown, where cost is of prime importance, where narrow profit margins rule out the careless operator, these men have found the answer. You might say the answer came out of the project itself, that it was to be expected in a development where something akin to the assembly line speeds home construction from raw land to finished house in a matter of hours. It was the answer that speed, versatility, and economy dictated. Compact, multi-purpose power. Low-cost equipment that can change jobs as easily as a chameleon changes colors. Tools that can be counted on to do the 101 jobs too heavy for men, too light for the specialized giants. One of the first to put Ford equipment to work at Levittown was Hank Morrell, the plumbing contractor. Hank has developed an ingenious coordination plan for his working units. His men installed the plumbing for from four to 5,000 homes a year, and his machinery must be shifted quickly from one job to another, and low-cost equipment helps contractors meet the challenge of competition. And from Levittown to Los Angeles, from Minneapolis to Miami, the quiet revolution continues, as a great industry provides better homes for modern... This means new capital investments, new job opportunities, new employment, new payroll. A new steel mill also attracts new housing. And Fairless Hills is typical of the growing new communities. It was designed by one of the nation's leading authorities on urban planning. Such a new community brings with it new schools and churches, new stores, medical facilities, and recreation areas. And a growing community offers many more job opportunities. The effect of a new steel mill upon a whole area is tremendous. And as a new neighbor, it was important to see that everyone in the area understood and appreciated that this spirit, a common good that no mere river can divide. Two years ago, this was farmland and forest. Levittown, now one of the 10 largest cities in Pennsylvania. For workers anywhere else in the world, this would be a miracle in itself. Trenton, New Jersey, the state capital, where government is big business, but far from the... ...hypnotized, they give a party. And bring the kids. School construction, we were talking about that all the time. I think that when they build the schools, you can play.
I'd rather have only big auditoriums. Well, you don't educate by an auditorium. You can have those. You can have those. I always know how my children behave. Any magazine written for young adults and matching their busy lives is bound to be lively, full of things to talk about, varied and warm. Summed up recently in a single phrase. And dramatized by Red Book in major shopping centers all over the country. For more than two years, Red Book had been working with merchants associations in shopping centers, studying young adults. When the Easy Living promotion was presented, almost every store joined in the first center-wide promotion in the history of marketing. Before Red Book could develop a successful selling program for young adults, it had to get out and see them many different ways. It had to get to know them so well that it could become a magazine solely for them. What are young adults like from an editor's point of view? Well, they're not so much high brows or low brows as wrinkled brows. They're serious and no wonder. To give these serious young adults the substance they want, to build a durable relationship with each reader, Red Book edits for one person at a time. Having established a personal relationship with its readers, Red Book then talks to them so that they recognize their own living situations in its pages. I wonder whether we could be happy in a place like that. When we brought the baby home, I thought Billy looked awfully worried. I've got a boy just like him. Comes home from school, 
always asking questions. I remember the first time my daughter asked me about God. They were out on strike for months. If that ever happened to us, I don't know what my husband would do. Just as the realities of family life are thoroughly woven into Red Book, so are the realities of community life. Many young adults come to the suburbs as ex-apartment renters. So, what about the roads? The schools? Will somebody please explain what a bond issue is? Writing for young adults, Red Book's editors have to keep learning and analyzing. Without too much crystal ball gazing, Red Book's editors have to keep an eye to the future. Are you going to the dance tomorrow, Yeah, my dear, There is a whole new generation coming, soon to be young adults. A bigger than ever market of people who have a history of their own, who remember all the way back to Eisenhower who probably never saw their mother use a ringer, think automobiles or household appliances, and have reserved seats on the next rocket to leave the Earth. But right now, you can ride along with the Happy Ghost Spending Buy it now, young adults of today. Ride with the young adults who are buying 70% of all homes sold. Swing into the orbit of more than two and a half million families. Right now, with the only mass magazine aimed exclusively at young adults.
city folk take a second alternative and move out to the suburbs. Today, the great cities... Most homemakers who live at the whim of the weather do not expect that air conditioning will do much for family eating habits. But the majority of families with air conditioning reported better summer appetites. They reported greater enjoyment of hot meals. They reported that central air conditioning keeps a family together more. A majority of them believe that air filtering and the control of temperature and humidity have pronounced beneficial effects on health. Beneficial effects in respect to allergies, to respiratory ills, and heart ailments. Cloth. While others simply tired themselves out before going to bed. With the air conditioned families, however, on no issue was there more certainty, more unanimity than this that air conditioning greatly improves sleep. That a regulated climate in one's own home is the best way of obtaining proper and needed rest. But outstanding among survey findings was air conditioning's very special gift to women. The gift of unsuspected energy for fulfillment of their roles in a modern world. Where indoor climate was comfortable, where environment was controlled, our study showed less fatigue less irritation. There is physical and emotional readiness to cope with everyday challenges. There was fresh enjoyment of marriage, of motherhood. Home was a good place to return to. In short, our can be in air-conditioned homes, not necessarily new homes either. Life as it can be, and more and more frequently is, in air-conditioned